Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and this is my worst movies of 2018. So every year, out of all the movies I see, there are a few that I don't like. Traditionally, I do not do 10 in this video. Not because the critic thing where they're like, we shouldn't have worse lists, we should just elevate things. But at the same time, there are movies that are really bad every year, <laughs> and I don't really understand that idea. I'm not one of those people who you know, thinks all things are bad or that Hollywood's bad currently or anything like that. But I think it's kind of natural to be like, that movie sucked, that movie was awful, what was the worst movie? You know, people talk about these things. So in my mind, it's very natural. So I have no preconceived issues, I think, or anything with making a worst movies of the year list. I know some people do, that's their own baggage, I guess. You know, it's just like, there's sometimes you have worse movies. It's just a thing. I only have five this time. I didn't see Gotti, which I thought about seeing, but then I was like, I don't know. I got other stuff to do. So these were films that let me down, disappointed me. Well, I guess the most disappointed I was in a movie was actually Incredibles 2. Uh, which universally, it seems like most critics are like, man, that was disappointing. Not it wasn't bad. It doesn't didn't get on here. It's, it's not actually that bad, but it's just disappointing. But I was probably more disappointed by a couple of films on this list. Some, I mean, I wasn't that surprised. I knew they are going to be bad. But yeah, so there were a bunch of bad movies this year. These are the, in what I saw, which were about 60-some movies, not as much as most people, unfortunately, but quite a few, that these were kind of the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst. And ones that I really, I, I think some of these were like real bad. Like, whoa, very warranted, I think. Um, and I guess, yeah, so let's just get to it. I don't have any honorable mentions. I guess Incredibles 2, sorry, because I was really disappointed, but it wasn't, really isn't as bad as any of these movies, unfortunately. I guess, not really. I wish it had been better. That's the thing, is like, I think the thing is you want movies to be good, ultimately. I do like seeing movies that are bad, and I think the internet is into that, and that's fine, that's cool, and I've definitely participated in things like that, and that's the kind of wide view of cinema. I guess I don't prescribe to that thing that, like, do we need to elevate bad movies because part of me is like yeah but that's like kind of the natural ecosystem of cinema deal with it enough pontificating about all that so let's go down the list at number five is a movie that it's original i actually didn't hate as much as everybody else did it's not that i didn't love it or anything but i thought people were too hard on it but then i saw the sequel and even though we had movies like a movie like searching that did this whole thing actually well we had one of the movies that did it pretty much the worst and that is number five with unfriended dark web I think Unfriended Dark Web kind of makes the original look a lot more well thought out than this one is. And that's a lot to do with like when you're in a horror film. And when you talk about horror movies, you're usually talking about like the kills, the body count, who the villain, monster, whatever killer person is. But you don't talk about really the victim or the person that you are following. And unless you can get the conceit of what they're doing while you are following them and how it's important for you to follow them or want to follow them to a certain degree or not be super annoyed by them and just like passively follow them. And in this, you have this one character, Mitis or Mattis or whatever, played by Colin Woodell. And as he has gotten this computer that he found in a lost and found and is using it to make these Skype calls and is going through his computer and it's not his and going through it and finding more and more deep, dark, secret information. At first you're like, okay, you found this computer. Okay, you're not going to look up like what these email addresses are on the Facebook and the Skype. And you see the email on Slack and Facebook and things and he doesn't even try to look it up. And first you're like, this is a little weird. But as he keeps going in and in, there's a difference between like wanting to see and going with a certain character's curiosity and just being frankly stupid to a certain degree. The believability in how he got into this mess was just frankly ridiculous. And it almost like doesn't work as well because you're not really getting like, I don't really know much about him as a character other than he stole this laptop. He has a girlfriend, he uses sign language. But as a character, like, what are his interests other than that he has a bike and a bed? It's about this mystery of the dark web and all that Thor stuff that scares me and I don't really want to go on to and watch, like, weird creepypasta sort of videos about. But, like, like I literally have no clue about any of it. But the way they're doing this mystery, a lot of the hacking in this is just beyond, like, I don't think any of that is real. It's, like... It doesn't take a supernatural angle like the original ended up doing, but in this one it takes like a supernatural angle in the fact that like some of the hacking they're doing is like frankly insane. It feels like something in the 90s where they're like, the internet will probably be able to do this, so we'll like let them do this. You know, like ordering a pizza, 
still can't do that shit online so it's like you know in this it's like they just do like way too many things with the internet that you're just like what then there's simple things like he keeps getting these facebook messages as notifications on the side of his desktop and he's logged into a different facebook but it's like how is he getting those notifications like is he just open on firefox or google chrome somewhere and he uses safari a lot so i already don't like this person so number four i only saw this because nolan made me nolan from pizza party and it's not a traditional review it's just me and nolan talking so instead of a clip of me doing a review it'll just be parts from that video that me and nolan did because why would i do a review of it as well that seems silly so anyway so at number four is full metal alchemist i think the people think that uh things like the last airbender and full metal alchemist ah. aren't adaptable like i really hate the stigma of like seeing things in live action because people think it's not cool because of how hollywood works but it, i think if like they used practical effects and did really cool tricks and stuff like things like avatar the last airbender full metal alchemist etc could be cool in live action but the, yeah but the problem is one nobody wants to invest in an adaptation of a silly cartoon for little boys two mm. uh they don't attach anybody competent to direct these movies and three, yeah. nobody understands like at its core what the source material is usually about um so like they're they're more like they seem to be more, more literal focused in that oh man they probably want like all of these moments in there when really i think fans you know there'd be a vocal minority who would complain that oh my favorite moment wasn't put in the movie but like fans in general would appreciate if there was more um you know general it was it was just a general good movie I think. yeah well yeah and it's like the same thing with sort of the the death note movie where it's like if you'd picked one one plot line it, that would be a movie but mm -hmm. picking several at once i don't really understand because in the death note movie if they had gone with whoever the kid was with the death note book mm -hmm. or whatever and the police detective or you had gone with him and the girl those two individual things are movies yeah but ramming them together and this was like 25 different movies but i almost think because full metal alchemist has so many different characters and things they were trying to do the show or the manga in the movie and i kind of would be like well if you're going to do the movie i think it should just be alan ed and not have as many people be as uh um, as present but this was like really early on you're like this is not good. If, like, you wanna, there's... If, if you want to be super nitpicky, you can say from the first frame it looks bad because the Netflix original film title card had a bad font choice. That was wow, that, that was, was that was the that was the that was the uh, <laughs> that was the calm before the storm. That, that, that like was, that. That's that's like you standing at the edge of a pier and you can see yeah. the darkest blackest clouds that are spewing out red lightning and like you can see like skulls <laughs> in the clouds and you're just like. Man, I should probably just go somewhere else, but you just want to—you just want to watch and see what happens. Anime adaptations. I don't know how, of all the various crazy content things that Netflix gets involved in, why this is one of them. I don't know. Three of these are from Netflix. Wow, didn't think of that. I also had three of my top ten that were from Netflix too. So go figure, but not at the top as much. So number three, I think, was disappointing because. I never thought I'd see a movie this bad from this franchise, and it was the last one, the first of the Fantastic Beasts was bad, but this was infinitely worse, and that is number three is Fantastic Beast: Crimes of Grindelwald. This movie is like everything everyone hates about modern Hollywood and modern sequels and spin-offs and prequels and franchise films and extended universes. When you don't give a shit, these are so monotonous. But the difference in between when they work and when they don't is that when they work, you as the audience feel like you want that. So it makes sense. You're like, oh, this film studio is making this other film because I liked Iron Man and Captain America and Thor. And so them coming together is something I sort of want. And the film acts like hey you like these moments you're there so forth fantastic beast sort of doesn't do that you don't like the other fantastic beast does anyone does anyone really want to see another fantastic beast does anyone really like eddie redmayne i mean he's never been in a good movie so why the fuck would you he's like a good actor in bad movies so i'm sure he'll be remembered forever this movie acts like you're just so enamored of harry potter 
you'll sit through this crap. And while I was watching it, I was like, I mean, do we? This ruins the legacy of everyone involved in it, including mostly the franchise. And the Fantastic Beasts are like this appendices that I would much rather never buy ever. And if you ever get me that shit for Christmas, I will not take it home with me. I had a really hard time staying awake through a Harry Potter movie. Like, what have you done? Like, this is awful. Like, you have made something unique and interesting and different, and there was never in any blockbuster thing a film like a Harry Potter movie. You always have these cool, cool like, English big special effects movies, and, like, everybody likes seeing them. They're nice to see around Thanksgiving. I was like, oh, Fantastic Beasts are back. It'll be like the holiday season all over again. Except I get the stupid crimes of Grindelwald. Like, I had to grow up, and my reward is this. Is this movie? All right, so number two. Actually, the top three, you know what? does tie actually these are all franchise movies which is hollywood in 2018 huh? <laughs> yeah i don't know this was a franchise that i went from being like eh to oh to ooh is basically my evolution with the cloverfield franchise and i think all of ours because i don't think they're gonna make any more of these after this one so number two is the cloverfield paradox cloverfield paradox isn't that at all in fact it's something you've seen a million times before and thus it is not very interesting. Like everything that happens in this space station is something that pretty much happened in Alien or Event Horizon or countless other movies before it. And it doesn't really feel interesting anymore. It feels boring. This is kind of a combination of Jason X and a crappy Jason kind of origin story movie that even Friday the 13th was smart enough not to actually make. Why Cloverfield Paradox exists and tries to like both explain the franchise, which is something that you would never want to do, that's something horror franchises always try to do, is explain the villain, explain the circumstances, but that's something you as an audience don't actually want. That's probably why people get less interested in these franchises as they go on. And it seemed like something Cloverfield could avoid ever having to explain itself. Whether that's because of the reshoots this film had, it kind of like make this film work a little better, in, in fact makes it worse. When you have a film that's basically trying to do the haunted house but in a space station thing that Alien had done before it, I guess that was a spaceship but whatever, you're kind of left with a film that just feels like something you've seen before so it's like a crappy kind of version of an interesting riff that someone did before it except this isn't interesting making this film feel like the kind of sci-fi as thriller idea that you've seen more times and forgotten more movies that do this than you ever care to think about the cloverfield paradox i guess maybe calling it the cloverfield paradox makes sense because it is a paradox of an idea that they thought that this could be in the same line as the other cloverfield films it even does the crappy things that franchise do that you hate early on in its third movie i don't want to know that they did this weird god particle thing made all these dimensions happen and that's what caused the cloverfield universe it's the same way like i don't need a twilight zone episode that explains that all the twilight zone episodes were in the same universe either if there is an episode like that i feel like there probably isn't which is probably why we still like that a lot more um, but this whole idea of like everything's connected is such a lazy kind of screenwriting and storytelling idea. J.J. Abrams might be Mr. Mystery Box, but honestly it feels like he's Mr. Mystery Box because he doesn't actually understand how to keep a mystery going. He just understands the hype of a mystery. And Cloverfield Paradox, obviously because it's release and everything like that, is really all hype. Because once you get into and open the box of the Cloverfield Paradox, there's really nothing there, or at least nothing you'd ever be interested in. Number one, I... I think mainly the reason this is number one is because I was so disappointed that they did this, that they could let me down so much, because I... Okay, I'll just say what number one is. The number one worst movie of 2018 is Godzilla, Planet of the Monsters. Now, I want to preface something here. This is, I had my list on here. I want to preface something that I, I like Godzilla movies. I think they're really great. Um, I have a... Sometimes I have a Godzilla up there. I probably should have for this. Point is, is that I've always wanted an animated Godzilla movie. I thought that would be amazing. When I heard they were making these with Netflix, I was excited. I was like, this is going to be so cool. And then at work, I told people, I was like, man, do you like Godzilla? There's an animated Godzilla movie and it's on Netflix right now. And they're like, oh my God. In my mind, I was like, there's no way this will suck really bad and everyone will be mad at me the next day because i just simply said that this movie existed and even though this has happened i when i was a kid i blamed someone who brought in return of the jafar and we got mad at them 
for bringing in a movie that was bad, which is not their fault because they didn't make the movie. Um, people did get mad at me for Godzilla Planet of the Monsters. And that's not the only reason because I got embarrassed somewhere. That happens quite a bit everywhere in my whole life, but that's not the point. Is Godzilla Planet of the Monsters is number one because it is really awful and I really hate it. And I really hate it for making me dislike Godzilla so much. There's been other movies in this. There's a second one, which I wouldn't, I thought was an improvement. I haven't watched the third one yet. I am going to review it, don't worry. But the first one was real bad. And that is why Godzilla Planet of the Monsters is my worst movie of 2018. When I heard the concept of this, which is basically that uh, after Earth has been taken over by Godzilla for 20,000 years, a bunch of humans are going to try to finally take him down and take back Earth. And that was enough of a concept for me. I was like, hey, dystopian world ruled by Godzilla for 20,000 years. That sounds awesome right there. Why didn't you stop with that? And apparently they did not. And they like went all in on explaining a lot of backstory. And I think, you know, Godzilla movies have this thing where you saw it for Godzilla. That's why they usually go Godzilla other title or versus someone less famous like Mothra. We know it's true. It's who you want to see. It's who you wait the whole movie for. Sometimes far too long in certain recent cases. In this, you're getting all this info about these people on a spaceship who, oh yeah. So this, this is the other thing is this concept goes way too conceptual. It, it's like way too much. There's way too much of this nonsense bullshit that it almost becomes like white noise to a certain degree. I was like, there are, I get there's the guy with the black hair that he's like kind of the hero of this thing, but there's just like so many people in this. It was honestly hard to tell them apart, mainly because the character designs, frankly, were not distinctive enough and it would have been cooler in a more traditional animated thing. I don't really like that animation style. I don't think it honestly works very well. So those were what I thought the worst movies. 2018 were i guess i guess i probably have more if i well <laughs> i mean this next year is gonna be two norm of the north movies so whoa it's not looking good for 2019 but obviously i choose the movies i see and also time constraints and things like that so i think that's probably why there aren't 10 i never really do 10 i never i don't think i have done 10 maybe i have i forget i don't know point is it's like that's why there's more of a limited number and i don't want to arbitrarily put things on a worst of list really um so that's why that is but i think it was a pretty good year to be honest but these definitely did suck so right anyway if you would like to list what you thought were your worst movies of 2018 and tell me what you were disappointed by or tell me how it was way too hard in the Godzilla movie or I should have had this in there or how could you forget this one and all that stuff, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to. I guess that's it and I hope we have a better 2019.